Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the south. More specifically, we are in Atlanta, Georgia, and even more specifically than that, we are at the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, which actually does have a public museum at their facility. Now, the Center for Disease Control is, the, is a United States government agency that is uh, responsible for public health, public safety, uh, tracking diseases, and that sort of thing. Of course, you know, we heard a lot about the CDC uh, with the recent pandemic, a lot of information coming from them, some controversies and whatnot, but uh, they were at the forefront of the national consciousness during uh, during the, the pandemic. The museum actually was closed during the pandemic, of course, like, like all museums are, but I just realized it actually has reopened. And um, I came in today, and I must say this has probably the heaviest security of any uh, museum I've ever been to. They um, they make you get out when you pull up to the gate. They make you get out of your car. They um, make you roll on your windows, open the trunk, open the hood. They look under the hood of your car, look in the trunk of your car. A guy walks around with a mirror and looks underneath the, the bottom of your car. You know, it makes sense though. It is a government agency. You know, there's very possibly dangerous things here you know there's research done on dangerous diseases viruses you know you, you wouldn't want uh, something bad to happen here or an attack or something you know just any horrible thing could happen so you know you expect them to have uh, heavy security so no absolutely no issues with that you have to show your ID um, you know they just need to know that it's safe that you're coming it's, but it is I do like that they do open their doors and allow you to visit their uh, their museum um, I actually I had to come back to my car. I was doing my, uh, trying to do my intro in front of the actual building, and there was the guards were concerned, saying that I can't show the campus. I can show the museum, but I can't show the campus. So I went back to my car. I'm doing my my intro now, and uh, then we will be uh, heading in to the museum. So uh, let's go take a look at the CDC museum. Please follow me. This exhibit in here shows different campaigns to uh, help raise confidence in uh, the COVID-19 vaccine. Back here we have uh, a puppet show that was put together to uh, help raise confidence in the vaccine. And then here is a, uh, a quilt, a quilt used to help uh, raise confidence. Start out with the early history of the CDC. And these here are early quarantine cards. They would come and put these on the uh, doors of businesses where there was uh, disease breakouts. Even putting these on people's, uh, people's homes to uh, let them know that uh, there was disease. Go you imagine if someone came and put a syphilis sign on your door that said keep out. That'd be embarrassing. Some of the glassware used in the CDC lab. Some of these are very, very tiny, almost comically tiny pieces of uh, glassware there. Now this here is an egg candler. This is originally was a piece of farming equipment. You would hold a chicken egg here and it would light it up so you could see kind of what's inside the chicken egg. We actually would use this as lab equipment as they studied influenza. They would inject influenza into the egg to be able to study it. And they'd use this egg candler to find figure out where to where to inject the influenza. This is the Osborne one. This is a portable computer from 19 
81. So this is kind of the original laptop here. Of course, you probably couldn't actually put it on your lap, but it looks like the keyboard actually closes up and like encases the computer there. Never seen one quite like that. These giant microscopes here. Of course, microscope being a very important tool for the CDC. When you're fighting things that are very, very tiny, you need a way to actually look at them. This is a Bactronic colony counter. So it says this is used for the study of STDs. You can see they have the little culture there on the red tray there and the magnifying glass so you can get a good look at what's growing on that dish. Talks about some of their international efforts such as attempts to wipe out malaria and Zika virus, two viruses contracted by uh, mosquitoes. There is a Zika preparedness kit. Has different ways to fight mosquitoes. The um, mosquito netting there, as well as tons of bug repellent, ways to keep bugs away from you. A giant commemorative wooden polio vaccine there from Nigeria. Also, there's a traffic paddles that stop polio. They would use this to direct traffic, but also encourage people to get the polio vaccine. And actually, there is an actual polio vaccine from 1996. Now, this is very interesting here. The mystery of the red spots. It talks about a mysterious skin ailment suffered by flight attendants of Eastern Airlines. It would, uh, get off the flight and there were these little red spots all over their skin at first it was believed that blood was actually seeping through their skin during the flights for some reason and then uh, thought that maybe it was some strange skin condition but after the CDC completed their uh, investigation it was determined the red spots on the skin of the flight attendants was from the uh, demo only stamp on uh, the life jacket. They would do the uh, demonstration of how to inflate the life jacket at the beginning of any flight. The red paint from the stamp would get all over their skin and uh, led them to believe that it was some strange health condition, but it turned out just a little ink on their skin. And they switched to using a, they stopped using the stamp there because uh, it was causing red spots to get on the flight attendants. Now when we think of the CDC, we think of, uh, you know, viruses, illness, that sort of thing, but they actually deal in other types of public safety, such as uh, injury from automobile accidents, and uh, that includes the promotion of the use of seat belts. There's a seat belt uh, demonstration kit there. It says that when seat belts were first mandated in uh, 1968, there was actually a huge pushback. People didn't want to wear them, but... Uh, CDC says that, uh, yeah, you really probably should. And here's an exhibit on their CDC's most popular PR campaign of all time, the Zombie Preparedness Campaign. Of course, this was 2011. The Walking Dead was one of the most popular TV shows in America. The Walking Dead, the first season actually took place in Atlanta and featured a visit to the CDC. So they uh, released this campaign telling people to uh, create a zombie preparedness kit, but uh, in reality, the kit could be used for other, uh, other emergencies as well. So they kind of felt like the idea was if you could prepare for a zombie apocalypse, you could be prepared for anything. Let's see, they actually made a comic book here featuring uh, a zombie apocalypse. Different disease prevention campaigns. There's Diabetes prevention. Yes, I'm telling you not to gobble food that is raining from the sky. It's cancer prevention, trying to get people to uh, avoid skin cancer. Different ways to prevent the sun's evil rays from frying your body. Here it equates getting tanned with putting yourself in a giant toaster. Here's an immunization campaign featuring C-3PO 
and R2-D2 find it interesting that they picked the uh, only two characters that uh, could not possibly <laughs> be, be immunized, the only two characters from the film that are completely inorganic. Maybe I'm just overthinking this. There's some Dr. Seuss posters promoting immunizations. It's a coloring book promoting the uh, measles vaccine. You can see, yes, that's the vaccine there. Their uh, target to eliminate is the measles. And here's our hero, Dr. Immunity. I don't know if it's a good idea to associate uh, darts with, uh, with getting vaccinated. Kids generally don't like the idea of having darts thrown into their skin. Here's some air purifying devices used during the uh, pandemic. Say, get smart campaign. He's a little plushy owl there. Apparently this campaign was about not, not uh, overusing antibiotics. I guess there was concern that antibiotics could possibly be overprescribed. She talks about public health at the U.S. border. They would screen new immigrants for uh, for disease or other maladies. Here's the Alien Medical Examination Manual. Right there, it says it says that people that were deemed unhealthy or unfit were either quarantined or deported. And here's a wooden intelligence test from 1915 because they would uh, make them try to match the different blocks to the shapes. I huh, wonder, wonder what the purpose of that was. It says here the CDC was primarily uh, created to combat malaria during World War II. Let's see the insecticide sprayer there, a big giant massive heavy-duty insecticide sprayer. So are the disease detectives, the Epidemic Intelligence Service, I guess this is a organization of detectives that try to track down the uh, causes of diseases. And in the hallway here, we have the class projects of the Epidemic Intelligence Service. It would apparently create a class project every year with their graduating class of detectives. You can see the Monopoly board there. And it says they often used the hole in the shoe as their symbol. It said that they would walk around until they had holes in their shoes trying to solve these uh, disease mysteries. Yeah, these are pretty interesting. What do we have here? Some Spuds McKenzie flip-flops, some more holes in shoes and then uh, what's that a satellite up there planet earth down below there's a piece called the hard-nosed epidemiologist where you see he has a actually a clam clapped onto his nose the measles hotline up there looks like the phone itself actually has measles here's a do-it-yourself polio Vaccine kit says add contents of vial to left, add formaldehyde to obtain desired vaccine. Huh. And there is an octopus encircling the earth. It says some call it surveillance. These are all very, very creative. This talks about the CDC's battle against venereal disease. Some of the posters they'd use to raise awareness since this psychedelic poster was uh, hung up in San Francisco. These are different awareness posters that will be posted out on uh, buses and public places. I thought it was just a sore throat. I thought a thing like that could never happen to me. I thought it was just a heat rash. But 1,500,000 Americans have syphilis or gonorrhea. I don't know it.
some educational materials on VD. A little comic book called Johnny Gets the Word. Ooh, but Johnny's not happy about that word. And there's a ashtray that says VD stands for very dangerous. These uh, dollars here. I guess you would leave these, I don't know, leave these on a table or leave them out. Someone would think it was money and pick it up, but instead of, instead of money, they'd get a message that says, syphilis is dangerous. This certificate states that sy syphilis is dangerous. Here's the spread of syphilis in a community. This is uh, kind of an original contact tracing where they would find, you know, hunt down different people that have had contact with people with syphilis and determine uh, how it had spread and try to stop it from spreading any further. Shows uh, the lines of people that have had intimate contact with one another. And then here's the key. It shows people are either infected treated, not examined, or not infected. So all the red people are ones that were infected with syphilis. Oh my. Look at this here. It's an authentic iron lung. It needs to be used to uh, help keep people with polio alive. Of course it would paralyze their body so they could not breathe pressure in here would help their lungs go up and down. You can see this picture here. All these different people in these iron lungs being kept alive. So yeah, they're just, they'd be stuck in this tube. Their head would uh, stick out that hole. It's, to me, this seems just like a nightmarish existence being trapped in a tube with only your head stuck out there. But uh, people live this way. It was not, not an easier or probably enjoyable life a lot of the time. And this specific iron lung belonged to this man, Barton Herbert Jr. Says that uh, he was inside this iron lung from, uh, I guess he was placed in here in the 1950s and lived in this very iron lung until 2003. So that is a long life lived in an iron lung. Now this is something that's not so great about the, the CDC, the Tuskegee experiments where they would uh, intentionally not treat uh, African American men just so they could study the uh, effects of untreated syphilis. So withholding treatment just uh, to uh, just so they could study someone who is uh, sick. So that, that's horrible. They shouldn't do that. And at least they are acknowledging now that uh, that was that was a rotten thing to do. Here's some more immunization campaigns here. This is uh, Welby. He is a mascot that uh, tells you to wash your hands. And Welby also says to take the oral polio vaccine. I still think my favorite though is uh, Dr. Immunity, Victor Vaccine, and Mean Ol' Measles. Here we have the uh, Peanuts Gang discussing the measles vaccine. Here is uh, exhibit on environmental health. Talks about high levels of lead in gasoline. Also uh, the lead in paint where children would eat paint chips because they were actually very delicious for some reason. I've heard that, that, that lead paint actually tasted very, very yummy and sweet. It's one of the reasons that kids ate it. Unfortunately, lead is, you know, very, very poisonous. This is Shapona. This is the Nigerian god of smallpox, which is actually worshipped by the Yoruban people. It actually has a monkey skull attached to it there. It's these uh, Shapona idols actually given to uh, CDC workers in Nigeria. Think about that, that smallpox is so terrifying that people actually worshipped smallpox as a god. But Shapona is not the only smallpox god. This is Shitola Mata, the Hindu 
god of smallpox. Again, that, that speaks a lot about how deadly and dangerous and horrifying smallpox is, that uh, certain cultures consider them to be a malevolent god. And you can see from these pictures here why smallpox was so feared. You can see the children infected with smallpox. These are uh, an old tool used to give smallpox vaccines. It's actually a little spoon that would be uh, inserted. They would actually scoop it into your skin. It said that uh, people were very wary of this uh, type of uh, vaccine as it seems very invasive using a spoon instead of a needle. So they would, would switch to needles which were much more uh, accepted. This was a postcard sent from Somalia to the director of the CDC commemorating the last case of smallpox ever uh, contracted naturally. And this, this guy here, Ali Malin, was the last guy in the world to get smallpox. He did survive, so that's good. But, wow, the last person to ever ha have uh, a naturally occurring case of smallpox. This is the pedo jet. It is a way to rapidly uh, vaccinate people. It says it's uh, it's uh, they they build up pressure by the foot. You build up pressure there, and then you blast the vaccine into someone's arm. Talked about how the CDC was behind the popularization of water fluoridation. It says that it uh, helps with oral health, causes 25% fewer cavities. I'm certainly not gonna argue with that, but I hate the taste of fluoridated water so much. I have a hard time drinking water that's been fluoridated. I don't know, I, I guess maybe I'm just uh, just sensitive, but uh, if it's, I'm in a city where water is fluoridated, I just, I really have a hard time drinking it. It talks about Legionnaire's disease, which was apparently was a great mystery when it occurred in 1976. This is the mystery of the killer fever. Apparently it broke out at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel in uh, Philadelphia at an American Legion convention. That's actually why it's called Legionnaire's disease, because it was at an uh, American Legion convention and they determined that the virus was living in the water from the air conditioning unit and there's a jug of that water there. They said the yellow color there is the uh, chromium they added to kill the bacteria and they do specify that there this was tested 35 years later and there is no more Legionnaire's disease in that bottle. I don't know if they would have it on display if it was just full of Legionnaire's disease. <laughs> we talk about Ebola and uh, these containers here used to ship Ebola from Zaire back to the CDC in 1995 just imagine that you have infected tissue I guess they would take the tissue infected with Ebola put them in these jugs and ship them through FedEx back to the United States oh my gosh you want to be really careful with these, that just, it's just a thought. You know, they look very secure. They look as possibly as secure as any packaging could look, but uh, just imagine the, the stress of like being on an airplane and knowing there's a a, uh, a jug of Ebola sitting in the airplane. Yeah, look at this lid here, how thick that that lid is. You wanna plug that hole, keep that Ebola in the in the jar where it belongs. Over here on this wall, they talk about the AIDS epidemic. And I remember that growing up in the 80s, there was a lot of fear and uh, misunderstanding about, uh, about the virus. There's uh, Ryan White, who's a young, young child who, who got AIDS through a blood transfusion and was denied the ability to go to school and ostracized because people were afraid of him. People didn't know much about the virus other than the fact of how deadly it was. Talks about the uh, public health risks of smoking here. Shows how smoking is studied in uh, 
the labs here, the smoking machine. Machine that can actually smoke. And there's the, the pads there that collect the all the yuckiness from the uh, burning tobacco. And this is interesting here. These are specially designed research, research cigarettes. They actually have a standardized uh, cigarette they use for studying. It says the uh, it says Tobacco Health Research University of Kentucky. This is a special box used to ship in uh, infectious substances as they started using this during the anthrax attacks in uh, 2001. Yeah, it's interesting to think about all the different things that uh, constitute public health emergencies. Here it talks about Mount St. Helens, the eruption there. There are samples of the Mount St. Helens ash there in a jelly jar. Here we have some actual vaccines from the 1976 swine flu vaccination program. This talks about the campaign to fight the guinea worm. Well, this was a public health campaign that was largely backed by Jimmy Carter and uh, focused on the elimination of the guinea worm. You can see lodged in that person's tongue or their ankle or the bottom of their feet. That looks rather horrifying. There's an actual guinea worm in that jar. That's pretty, that's pretty disgusting. <laughs> it does say that uh, today the cases are down to 200. In uh, 1986, there was uh, 3.5 million cases. So down to 200, that's pretty good. As I climb back up the stairs here, we have a wall full of viruses. Oh, look at all these disgusting viruses, bacteria along the wall here. So we have left the CDC and headed next door here to Emory University. There's something here on campus that I wanted to uh, check out. Now the reason I'd wanted to come over here to Emory University is because I'd heard that they have the most amazing school mascot of all time. I'm a huge fan of strange and unusual mascots. I love uh, seeing the different mascots that different institutions use and uh, how they incorporate them. But here we have the mascot of Emory University, Dooley. Dooley the skeleton. Look at this. It is clearly, if not the greatest school mascot, clearly the most uh, macabre and ghoulish. A giant skeleton there. You can see he's got a top hat. He's got a cane there. Pretty amazing. I don't know what all this like flying black matter is, but I guess that's just part of his magic and ghoulishness. Oh, check that out. I guess it uh, does make sense in some sense. You know, it's a it's a medical a medical college here at Emory. You know, they probably do have a lot of skeletons in the classrooms, medical skeletons. So, uh, Dooley seems to be a fitting mascot. So apparently Dooley here first appeared in the uh, college newspaper. He would write uh, essays about campus life as a classroom skeleton. So from the perspective of a skeleton and uh, his works would appear here yeah, for four decades and then he would finally make his in-person debut at the first ever dance held at Emory University in 1941 and he appeared with a top hat and this skeletal costume here 
the one that's crumpled up at the feet. So someone appeared dressed as Dooley, wearing this skeleton costume with some probably some skeleton face paint. But here, the mascot shows that he has cast off the, uh, the costume there, cast off this crumbled costume and showing his true form as an actual super spooky skeleton. Wow, I do, I do definitely appreciate Mr. Dooley here. I love the backstory, love the fact that a spooky skeleton is actually the mascot of a major university. And do you think that Dooley is the greatest school mascot? If so, leave a comment in the comment section. And if you don't think he's the greatest school mascot, leave a comment letting me know what you think the greatest school mascot is. I really love Lord Dooley. I'm trying to think of what my favorite uh, school mascots are. Definitely leaning towards the Billiken from St. Louis as being one of the most amazing uh, school mascots, but Dooley is up there. I was gonna check in the bookstore to see if they had any uh, Dooley merch. I guess the bookstore is actually a Barnes and Noble here. Yeah, I'm disappointed to say I don't see anything with Dooley on it. You just have this crest for the college on most of the merchandise. No plushy Dooley, it's just this bald eagle wearing an Emory shirt or this random dog. It even says mascot factory on it. I don't know, are these also mascots for the school? Yeah, they seem to like using this little cartoon eagle instead of Dooley. Yeah, it makes me kind of sad. All this merchandise, all these shirts, not a single thing with Dooley on it. I feel like he's a very neglected school mascot. You can even get a Emery giraffe, but no Dooley. No Dooley anywhere. Yeah, the closest thing they have to Dooley is these, uh, squishable plague doctors that's only like a vague connection and then they also sell like bunnies and avocados as well it's very sadly no dually merch whatsoever here at uh, the college bookstore i don't know if people are not proud of their mascot dually the the skeleton but uh not a bit of merchandise to be found Fortunately, there is, you know, you hear some thunder there in the air. There supposedly is something peculiar lurking in these woods here. Let's uh, head into the woods and see what we can find. Can you guys hear that thunder? Oh my goodness. Yeah, here in the woods of Emory University is this. This monument here. It says, this monument has been erected in 1963 by the Gravity Research Foundation, New Boston, New Ham Hampshire, Roger Babson, founder. It is to remind students of the blessings forthcoming when science determines that gravity is how it works and how it may be controlled. Apparently, Roger Babson was a person who hated gravity. He, I guess he, he thought that gravity was an oppressive force and his goal was to find a way to end gravity. He wanted to conquer gravity. So uh, to encourage researchers to be able to defeat gravity, he donated these markers to uh, different schools. So try to use his money to combat gravity. And unfortunately, this has been up here since 1963, the good students at Emory University have still not defeated gravity. Got some rain coming down here as we head back to the car. Unfortunately, they didn't sell any Dooley umbrellas. Otherwise, I'd have something to protect me from the rain.
All right, made it back to the uh, parking garage here as the rain grows more dense. Whew, I must say, like, um, anything that's at a university or college, just to get out and see it, is never something simple. I had to park, like, in a parking garage, like, half a mile away, walk there, and, you know, had some side trips, and then walk back in the rain. Convenient parking is just simply something that does not exist at college. And I remember going back when I was in college, I remember parking was always a nightmare there. You had to get there like super early, get there an hour before your class, just on the hopes that you might find a parking spot. And you know, it's, it's very hard to just jump out and see something cool, but Dooley, Dooley was worth it. And look what else is here, right next to Emory University. It is Hawkins National Laboratory from Stranger Things. This is the actual building that they used in Stranger Things for the evil lab where they did uh, experiments such as uh, experimenting with telepathic children, contacting alternate dimensions full of monsters. It does say notice. Do not enter here. It says unauthorized entry is prohibited. This it says this building is vacant. That's <laughs> that's what they'd like us to believe. This building is vacant. No, 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 no. There's no monsters or portals to other dimensions in here. Sure, we believe you. Now, obviously, I'm not going to trespass or try to enter the property, but we can at least peek in the front window here. Oh, very, very suspicious. Definitely, uh, definitely some dark things going on in here. It all does kind of tie in together. You know, we went to the CDC today, which also is full of mysterious labs. So earlier today, we went to the CDC. We talked about how the first season of the popular show Walking Dead uh, took place in Atlanta and it involved a plot point where the survivors went to the CDC to try to find answers about the zombie apocalypse. And even though the show was filmed in Atlanta, they were not allowed to use the actual CDC building uh, that is in Atlanta, probably just because of the security clearance. Like I said, um, they didn't want me filming uh, around the outside of the building too much because they didn't want to show the campus. So they probably did not want a bunch of Hollywood actors and, and crew in there filming. So they had to find a different location to be a stand-in for the CDC. And that's what's behind me here. This is the quote-unquote CDC from The Walking Dead. It does have some resemblance to uh, the building we went in earlier today. As you can see, if you look over there, it is not the CDC. It is the Cobb Energy Performing Arts Center. But uh, yeah, it is a very impressive building. And like I said, it does kind of look like the uh, building we went in today where the CDC Museum is housed. So, you know, they had to, couldn't use the regular CD here, CDC here in Atlanta. But I guess this is probably the next best thing. I, I would say that's a uh, CDC-ish building. So quite the adventure today here in Atlanta. We went to the CDC Museum where they have all sorts of secret labs where they research different diseases and harmful things that could uh, devastate the population. And then we went to another secret lab, the Hawkins National Lab from Stranger Things where they, they made uh, made interdimensional ghouls that uh, stalk children in their dreams. We came over here to uh, the, the stand-in CDC from The Walking Dead, where a virus has infected people and turned them into mindless zombies. And then also, we got to meet Dooley, or Lord Dooley, the skeleton mascot of Emory University. He's the mascot of the university, but they refuse to acknowledge him, refuse to sell any merchandise 
in his likeness. And I thank you guys for coming along with me for these adventures. If you like these videos, please subscribe. It helps me out and lets you know when the new videos arrive. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If uh, you'd like to uh, support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. We got four brand new Carpetbagger Monster Face pins. You can buy them individually, buy your favorite one, or you can buy all four of the new ones uh, for a discounted price. Also doing personalized messages on Cameo, uh, special birthday messages, anniversary messages, just for fun messages, whatever you want. All that information is in the description of this video. And all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this diseased dirigible in the air. Till next time, my friends. This one's in the bag of diseases.